Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Two years ago, floods destroyed the Clendenin Public Library, but that library has been reborn and is once again serving the residents of that small Kanawha County community. Let's pay a visit to a library that has risen from the ashes. In June of 2016, floodwaters devastated much of West Virginia, and public libraries were not immune. The Raynell Public Library and Clay Public Library both received extensive damage, but were able to reopen fairly quickly. But one library here in Clendenin was not so lucky. That library was destroyed, and nothing inside the building was salvageable. It took two years, but in May of 2018, the Clendenin Public Library reopened in the building behind me, the old Clendenin Middle School. Let's go inside, take a look. With me now to talk about the new Clendenin Public Library is branch manager Tammy Parker. Tammy, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's been a long time coming, getting this library reopened. Yes, and uh, now the community is starting to find out that we're open, and everyone is real glad about that. Tell me about the, the process. I, you know, it's been two years, and a, a lot of things have happened. Uh, explain the whole process about getting this to the point where we are now. Well, first of all, we did have um, funding from the county commission, and because of the group 25045 Incorporated, we were able to get into this building. They revised remodeled the, the, the floor here. And so as they were working on that, we were collecting books and gathering furniture from all the other branches and main library in the mm -hmm. county. So most of what we have here is either given to us or loaned to us from other libraries. We bought very few things, but it was a lot of work gathering things and storing things and then moving things. And it took a while to move things in. As the carpet was put in and the walls painted, then they started bringing in shelves and furniture. and yeah. Yes, we should mention this is, was originally the uh, Clendenin High School, which morphed into Clendenin Junior High, Clendenin yes. Middle School. Yes. And, uh, I got, and now there's a clinic that shares uh, space here, and yes. the library has moved into that old building. Yes. yes. How, did, uh, how did that come about? Uh, the building is owned by the group 25045, and they mm -hmm. were interested in helping get the library back mm -hmm. in town, and they sought funding for us and offered us this to rent to us. So. I guess at some point there was some question as to whether the library would reopen at all. Well, I didn't have any doubts myself, um, but a lot of people in town thought that we wouldn't be coming back because it was such a devastation. And maybe a lot of people thought that because it was a small library, it wasn't going to come back. But from the beginning, um, some of the people in the Charleston Library had told us that we would have a presence in town. And we did. Since the flood, um, the bookmobile came every week since uh, I think maybe like the second week after the flood until the middle of May this year. And the county commission played a role in making sure the library reopened as well. Right? Yes, yes. Um, you worked at the library when the flood waters hit that day. Yes. Tell me, tell me about that day. Well, um, it was actually before the, the, fl the whole town was flooded. There was um, the you know, constant rain. We just thought it was a terribly rainy day. At one point in the afternoon, um, the staff and a couple of patrons were out on the sidewalk in front of the library watching what appeared to be uh, rapids going down the street uh, where there were cloud bursts and water was just pouring down the hills. So we thought that was interesting. Some of the staff left early, afraid they wouldn't be able to get home. And then we eventually closed at 6 o'clock only because of all the drains in town had, could not take all the water and therefore um, water was coming into the library from drains. How long did it take you to get back to the library and find out what had happened? Well, actually, I did not go back to the library for, uh, during any of the flood because I was um, taking care of my mother. Um, I did not know until 10 o'clock that night that the town was flooding. Mm. I was just, you know, at home watching TV. And, uh, and so my main concern was with my elderly mother. And the next day is when 
I talked to somebody from the library and, and they learned about the flooding even before um, I had told about that. So some of the people from Charleston had actually come up and looked at the building and I did not have an opportunity. But I was told that they found books and DVDs stuck in the ceiling tiles. Hmm. So. When the water uh, finally receded, did you go take a look? Yes, I took lots of pictures too. I didn't it's probably go in, pretty shocking, I would think. Yes, um, just mud everywhere. Of course, there was mud all through town, just inches and inches of mud. Um, the glass was broken out in the windows, and they had boarded them up. Um, just, just stuff stuck in our bike rack uh, in front of the library where some of the books and other items came out the front door where the water washed it. Um, not the front door, excuse me, the, the window where it had broken, and I took pictures of the books stuck in the mud and different things like that, but it, it was just heartbreaking, really. I'm sure the last two years have uh, been tough, uh, probably for you personally, in addition to the library. Uh, so what have you been doing the last two years? I've uh, mainly worked out of the Elk Valley branch. They uh, took the Clinton and Library staff in. Of course, they were closed themselves for a, couple, right. for a, for a year because mm -hmm. the bridge over to that library was had been washed away and it was shut down. Yes, so we time. were um, at Big Chimney at the former Elk Valley Library right. in Big Chimney. So I was based there, as was the other Clinton and staff, and, um, and I helped out at other branches as needed when there was short staff. I helped out at Charleston Library. Uh, Dunbar Library, Sissonville Library. Mm -hmm. So I was at each one of those places for several months. Well, now it's reopened. Uh, new building, new books. Uh, what's the reaction been from the public? Everyone has been excited. As a matter of fact, even before we opened, when people knew that we were starting this process and that it was on the news that we were coming back, I would be stopped in stores, on the street, at the gas station, in church, people asking when the library is going to open. So I kept everyone apprised. Um, and I would even stop and talk to people on the street if they waved to me and asked me questions. But everyone's been excited. And we've had quite a few people coming in, not like we used to, of course, but it's growing every day. We're getting a little bit more people. We had our first program last week, our first preschool story time, and we had 13 people come which I thought was a good thing for our first program. You know, it's a, a small place, so we wouldn't expect 50 or 60. Right. Well, besides books and computers and furniture, uh, you are bringing back programs. Can you tell me what kind of programs uh, you're looking to bring back? Yes, well, we, like I said, our preschool story time, we will have our regular uh, preschool programs. Um, we're going to offer some teen programs uh, that we did a few times in the past. And right now we're involved in our summer library club, so we have some special programs for the summer library club. Um, we've got Dino Ed coming, um, some other outside presenters that are uh, going to be performing at other libraries also. So we have quite a bit planned for the summer, and then we'll get into planning more. And we are taking suggestions from patrons also. <laughs> so. After two years, the library is back on its feet. Uh, but is it back where it was? No, not yet. Um, this um, is our temporary location, and uh, we'll be here for a few years and with hopes of finding a location sometime to, for a new library. Why don't you give us a, a tour of the facility now? Okay. So, Tammy, what area is this? This is our children's area. We have the juvenile fiction, our chapter books, and the nonfiction. This area, we have the easy readers for the younger children. And we too have two computers for uh, the patrons to use. For the preschool children over here, we've got the books and little play area. Okay. And then in front of us here. This is the adult area. On this side is our new books, our fiction, nonfiction, and then audiovisual, which is already growing. Which brings me to the question, where did you get all the new books? Obviously, you lost everything in the flood. Yes, lost everything that was in the library. We had about 700 items, well, more than that, checked mm -hmm. out. But we had 700 items that people returned mm -hmm. after the flood, and they went to Elk Valley Library and were housed mm -hmm. there. So we started out with our 700 items collection. 
we got books and movies and CDs, everything that we have from all branches and mm -hmm. the Charleston Library. We got duplicate copies that they could share with us or things that, <coughs> that weren't checking out their locations and they were able to give to us. And mm -hmm. now we are also getting new items. They've started ordering new items for us. Okay. Uh, obviously we have a circulation desk here. We had to hire new staff here. Our mm -hmm. um, other staff did not return to the mm -hmm. library with us. Uh, we have Tammy Smith at the mm -hmm. desk and Anita Edmonds. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Anita. So the circulation desk, we move this way. We're heading for your computer section, yes. and you look like you have some nice computers and yes. computer desks. We, um, these were um, computers that were saved for us from two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have actually one more public computer than we had before the flood. Mm -hmm. We um, have two back in the mm -hmm. young adult area mm -hmm. and five here for public access. And uh, so we're really glad because they're getting used every day. So where does the library go from here? What do you see as the future of the Clendenin Public Library? Well, what I see and hope for is that we will continue to grow here and keep very busy with people coming in all the time, having great programs, and that we will soon outgrow this place and we'll need to get our new building. So we will have a bigger and better library in Clendenin. What's the number one item on your wish list? Um, that's the new building. The new building. Yes. Well, Tammy, we appreciate the time and thank you for giving us the, the tour of this Nice new facility here in Clendenin. Thank you very much for doing this for us. <laughs> we'll be back with more on Libraries Today right after this. Welcome to Understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and expert advice. When I was a kid, my mother spent a lot of time tracing our family history. She traveled across the country, visited local graveyards, spent a lot of time in county courthouses, and, of course, called on local libraries to get the information she needed. From all of this, she produced a book on our family's history. Today, we are fortunate to live in a world where much of the work my mom was saddled with can be done online. Still, frequently, some good old-fashioned legwork is required. And that's where your local library can still play a crucial role. Let's drop by the Parkersburg Wood County Public Library and visit with that library's genealogist, Jim Miracle. Jim, thanks for being with us. Uh, pleasure to be here. Well, first off, what is genealogy? Genealogy is the study of one's roots or one's ancestors. To, there can be two re, re, reasons somebody might want to do that. One is just to find out where you come from. Uh, with the advent of the uh, shows on TV nowadays, who do you think you are, the, the celebrity thing, and a couple of the other ones. Uh, well, it seems like the interest is going through the roof. Oh, it has, and it's because of those, those, those shows. And I think also, uh, as we get older, we want to know where we come from. You know, we've been here for 30, 40 years. I kind of like to know where I'm from. <laughs> and I really love it that the kids are getting into it now. They're actually doing some of this stuff in school. I've had kids come, come, come in as a school project doing genealogy. And I've been able to help them do those pro projects, which I find really great <laughs> that they're actually doing it that early. Because I didn't get into it until I was almost 30 years old. So, yeah. And the other reason people are doing genealogy is... Uh, Hereditary diseases, mm -hmm. medical med 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 issues, breast cancer, uh, some of your maladies can your cancers can be tracked through through generations, and if you have a large instance of those, you might be more susceptible to it. So that's the other reason people are doing the, the uh, genealogy thing. What's your role in helping patrons explore their family history? It's uh, more of a uh, give them the tools to do it, show them how to do it. Uh, I do have a little more leeway since I am a junior. I'll just try and let me get a little past that. If people are trying to get through brick walls and that type of thing, I can help them bust that wall down, which is a fun thing to do. Because uh, so I've had people come in here, I've been trying to work on this for 20 years or five years, 
and I bust that wall through and I go, I don't know how you guys do that. I said, well, you know, experience. You learn different ways to get around things. And uh, I'm a big believer in net networking. I also uh, call people that I know that might know how to get through the wall. So. Well, describe for me <clears throat> the process when someone comes in looking for help. What's the process uh, from the library's perspective? It depends on what they're looking for, okay, and how experienced they are, all right? I've had people come in who absolutely know nothing about genealogy and want to know how to do it. So therefore, I take them to the basic family group sheet, which is a great tool to get started. And I get them to put down what they know, because you can't find out what you don't know if you don't know, have what you know. You gotta grow that tree. So you, I, especially kids, I say, go talk to your grandparents, go talk to your dad, your mom. And it's unfortunate nowadays, there's a lot of kids who, I don't think they really know who their mom or their dad is. And that's gonna be a problem for genealogy one of these days. But with the advent of DNA, that can solve some of those problems. You can check the DNA record and match some of that stuff up. So there are ways to get to get around those supposed brick walls that people get into. Now, if somebody has a more advanced or is into this a little more, uh, we have all kinds of books. We have a section with West Virginia stuff. We have sections with uh, biographies, book style, with uh, uh, Biography of different families, the Baileys, the Chancellors, people are from from this area, plus families that are from Virginia, different parts of the country. We have county records from every county in wood in West Virginia. And a lot of counties from Virginia, Ohio, stuff that's that's relevant to our area. Those that we don't have, we have ancestry. It's free for it's one of the things we offer free to our pay, patrons. We also have Heritage Quest, which you can, uh, you can use here. You can also get from home with your library card, but you can't get a hold, hold of Ancestry at home. I've been working a little bit on my family's history mm -hmm. and found some things about uh, a great, great, great grandfather of mine who was at Gettysburg and mm -hmm. fought in the Civil War. Uh, military history is, I think, become particularly fascinating for a lot of people. With the D, the D, the D, DAR, the SAR, Daughter of the American Revolution, Sons mm -hmm. of the American Revolution. There's actually a group called the uh, Sons of the Veterans of the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. You got a group, the Sons of the Union Veterans. I was in that. Matter of fact, I did that from doing re research on my great great grandpa who was in the Civil War, 63rd Ohio. That's one of the things that got me into Civil War in action. So I went from genealogy to to research and find an ancestor in the Civil War, got into Civil War in action. So I've tried to live up to what he might have been through. Of course, we can't do that because we didn't live that day by day. Uh, those guys were something else. And you learn that through genealogy. What advice do you have for other libraries who are interested in stepping up their, their game? Well, one of the goals with the genealogy section here is that I uh, would like to be a resource for any of the smaller libraries who don't have the resources or need help to set up those things. And uh, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, big thing is collect, get in contact with your local uh, historical societies. They're a treasure. Uh, they can help you get stuff. You need the network, network, network. So get in contact with them. If you want to start set, setting up a local library, put it in the press that you're wanting to set up a local history section, and you'll be surprised stuff people start bringing in. Uh, people find stuff in their house at all time, or somebody dies and they don't know what to do with their local history books. Uh, there's a lot of closet genealogists around. <laughs> uh, so if you can get that stuff for a do donation, that's great. Let's start, that's the way to start a library. Uh, that's the way we got a lot of our stuff. And remember your history. You know, if you forget your his history, we're doomed to fail. And I think sometimes we forget that. And if it wasn't for those ancestors, we wouldn't be here today. Jim, what do you see as the future of genealogy in libraries? I think it's going to be strong just compared to the last few, few years. It 
like I say, if we had roots and things went like this, and then it dropped it off a little bit, and then the show started coming on TV, and it went way back up here again. And I think it's going to stay there for a while. Media pushes it, and the advent of uh, the stuff that's on the computer nowadays. I mean, you can get looks at first-hand, first uh, original documents right on the computer. Of course, to what they yell, I tell people in this doing genealogy, you got to document, document, document. I've had people come in and look at the computer and come in and say, well, I've got 10 generations back. Yeah, you got 10 generations, but what proof do you have that that's the truth? Right. And people say, well, it's on the Internet. Well, the Internet's the Internet. <laughs> I, you need to document, document, document. And I show them using uh, Canada group sheets. This is Canada group sheet. <laughs> where it's got the parents and all the proofs are on the back of it. So this is one of the things I, I uh, express to people to use. Also, as part of our library, I was tasked with helping out any other library in the Mountain Library Network or any other libraries that want some help, and I've developed this genealogy workbook that will help people uh, that don't have a large grouping of or a genealogy library. I'd be glad to send copies of that to any library that needs it. So. Jim, I appreciate your time. It's it's a fascinating study about uh, exploring your family's history. Oh, I, I tell people it's a mystery. Uh, <laughs> you never know what's going to come around the corner. And the one thing I want to express is don't start genealogy unless you want to accept the stuff that falls out of your family tree. <laughs> Believe me, you're going to have horse thieves, you're going to have people that did things that you probably don't want people to know about. So don't start this if you don't think you don't want to shake the crazy stuff out of the tree. It is a tree. <laughs> things will fall out of it. Jim, thanks for all your time. Uh-huh. Thank you for coming. We'll have more on libraries today after this. Every child is curious. George, look what I found. Turn their curiosity into a lifelong love of learning. Create a curious reader. This is super bedtime reading. Share a book together today. Visit read.gov. While we're here at the Parkersburg Wood County Public Library, I thought we'd take a look at some of the major innovations that were just completed earlier this year. With me now is Library Director Brian Rates. Hi, Brian. Sam. How are you? Pretty good. So tell me about these renovations. Well, they've been a long time coming. So we actually, I'll give you back a little history. You were here just a year and a half, two years ago, when mm -hmm. we were talking about the original library in town, which is the 1905 Carnegie Library downtown. Right. Well, after that, they moved over here. They built this one and opened it in 1977. Mm -hmm. So 41 years ago. Yes. So it was time for some renovations. Yeah, when they built that library at that time, the most important thing was, of course, the collection. As, it, it, when you think about a library, secondary was the people space. So now we've come to 2018 and we've flipped it. Now more important is the space for the people and the collection is actually secondary. And one of the major challenges we've had for years that we've been, this whole renovation project was aimed for was accessibility. We had an, a, a, strong, a strong problem in this area with this library because the way it was built, you had the parking behind the building and to the side of the building. You had to walk around the building to get into it. And then the other big accessibility issue was the elevator, which is right behind me. It was all the way in the back of the building. So you had to walk around the building, go to the back of the building, down a hallway, get on the elevator, go downstairs, and go to use that area, the meeting rooms and the collection. A real problem for someone who was handicapped. Oh, very much right. so, very much so. In fact, there was a lot of people in the community that just stopped using the library because it was so inaccessible. So what we've done is we went through the existing children's room at that area and put in a new entrance, and we also opened up with a new side, uh, tore through the wall and opened up the elevator to both sides. So now you can come right in the, ele right in the front door, into the library, the elevator's right there, and the front desk is right there. And we left the, the original entrance behind us 
is still open, and so that's accessible for the bus stop and everything. And where we're standing used to be the children's area, yes, right? Yes, and that was the other big bonus to this project. We wanted to get it accessible with the doorway, but the other problem we had was the children's room did not have any programming space in it for story times and so forth. Well, they had to, beforehand, they had to put everything on the cart, transport it downstairs through the elevator, set up in one of the meeting rooms downstairs to do their programs, and then tear it down and bring it all up. So now we've created a new children's room in the back of the building, which you guys will go visit, and that has a programming space and everything is contained in that room. So now families can come in there, children can come in there, use the collection, and have their programming all in there. It takes a lot less time for the staff Plus, the, actual, the other thing is now they can check out the materials in the children's room. So parents aren't so rushed and grandparents aren't so rushed with their kids trying to gather them all up to go to the front desk to check out. Now they, the kids can continue to read in the new uh, reading nooks underneath the windows or, or doing activities on the Lego wall or something like that while they're checking out and talking to the librarian. How's the public reacted? They love it. They love it. Yeah. So... Tell me, is you, you've now completed the renovations that you've been trying to get done for years. Yes. What's your vision for the library down the road now? Well, we've got two major things. We were able to renovate the main floor, this floor right here. We gutted it from concrete floor all the way to the deck, redid everything, lighting, heating, and air conditioning, everything. Um, that has actually another added bonus made the library a lot more efficient. Our utility bills have gone way down we were unable to do the lower level. So we still have issues there with lighting and heating and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. The carpeting and painting needs to be redone. It's been over 20 years since that's been redone. So we need to look at doing that. The other big project is our branch. The oldest branch now is the Williamstown Library, which was an Insta library built in mm -hmm. 1977. So it's over 40 years old now, and we probably need to start looking at building a new library there in Williamstown. Well, good luck with those future plans. Yeah, we'll need it. Brian, thanks for being with us. Thank you. You have a good day. We'll have more on libraries today right after this. Welcome to understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Libraries are a big part of any community, as illustrated by the rebirth of the Clendenin Public Library. Residents were clamoring for the library to return, and it has. In Parkersburg, the library provides an important service for those of us interested in our family's histories with an on-site genealogist. West Virginia libraries truly help us all explore, discover, and create. I'd like to thank my guests for being on today's show. Clendenin Public Library Manager Tammy Parker, Parkersburg Wood County Library Genealogist Jim Miracle, and that library's director, Brian Rates. I'm Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today. <laughs>